believe it or not, we're actually going to make something today that isn't a tool for making more tools. I know. Weird. Welcome back to Cloud42. I'm James. Well, we are over here at the squat rack again. Uh, a few weeks ago, we put in a cable pull-down system into this rack. Blah, blah, blah. We get it. You need some storage pins. You couldn't find any place to buy them, so you're just going to make them. Let's get on with it already. I think it was Mark Rober who recently said, the best thing about being an engineer is if you want something that doesn't exist, you can make it exist. And the same thing goes for machinists and people who pretend to be machinists on YouTube. I'm going to make the storage pins out of 5 8 inch round mild steel. This is 1018, just picked up from my local steel yard. I'd like to cut two at a time, but if I just clamp two round pieces in the vise here, they're going to pop out. So let's see if we can get a clamp on this. This is just a welding clamp and it is not working. I can't really get purchased because of the shape of the casting. So let me just go ahead and push this through. Uh, we're going to have to trim the ends off because they got mangled when they were sheared. And the part needs to be 11 inches, so let me just go ahead and push this through and cut it at 12 inches, and then we'll come back and cut the ends off of them later. I'm gonna try a C-clamp here. This might work a little better. At least there's a place for the screw on the C-clamp to bear, and I can kind of get that in and holding. The question is whether the blade will clear, and the blade will just clear. And this will have the added benefit that the pieces won't fall on the floor when the blade drops through. And nothing moved, so I'm going to call that a win. I've got 10 pieces to cut here. I bought 10 feet of this and had them cut it at the yard into two five-foot pieces just so I could get it in my car. And I'll just go ahead and keep pushing those through and cutting it off 11 inches at a time. And for the last cut, I just have to cut the rough ends off and I'll go ahead and do all four pieces at once. I wasn't sure if this was really going to work because that clamp is holding the round pieces on top of round pieces and that really shouldn't work. It shifted a little bit, but looks like I got away with it. That's 10 pieces cut and the next stop is going to be over at the lathe. We need to just, yeah, just throw those on the floor. That's fine. Need to round one end and thread the other. I've got the first part mounted in a 5C collet here at the lathe, and of course the first step is going to be to touch off and face the end. Now ultimately I want to round this end, but I don't want to go at it with a file right away, so I'm going to come in with a chamfer tool and try to put a nice big chamfer on it and then come back with the file and round it out from there. I've got the VFD on this lathe so I can just slow it down. This is just a high speed steel chamfering tool so it's got a flat top, zero rake, and I'm just gonna feed it in. Now the key to success when you have a really wide tool engagement on a small lathe like this is to get into the cut and stay in the cut. If you let it rub or scrape, it will chatter. So you can see I'm getting a good bite and I'm pushing it and letting it cut. I'm not letting it rub, I'm not slowing down. And you can see that as the chips start to get thin, they start to curl, the chatter starts, I start scraping and it's pretty much over. That's about all I can do on a lathe this size, at least with the compound on it. We'll see in the future with a solid tool post on this thing. Now that I've got the bulk of the material knocked off the corner, I'm going to come back with a long angle lathe file and just work this. So I'm bracing my forearm on the top of the headstock so I have good control so that the uh, file doesn't get away from me. I have a handle on the file in case it comes flying out of the lathe so it won't puncture my flesh. And I'm just going to work this. I've got a file card so I can knock the material out of the teeth and I will just keep working it until it approximates a spherical end, which is what I want. It doesn't really matter here, it's just aesthetic. It needs to be at least tapered a little bit so that I can get things on and off of it. But other than that, the rounding is just to make me happy when I look at it. And 
we're getting very, very close. That looks pretty good to me. Now we'll just grab a piece of scotch bright here and polish that up a little bit. Again, this doesn't matter too much. It is just aesthetic. But I am going to call that good. And putting a nice ball end on a piece of 5 8 mild steel and a little lathe like this is it's a pretty good accomplishment. I feel good about that. That will work. Now we'll just flip it around and get ready to thread the other end. I'm going to thread about the first inch and a quarter, so we'll have a little bit more than that sticking out from the collet. Tighten it down, and we should be ready to go. This end is also just a raw saw cut, so we will face that off as well. Arguably, the other end didn't need to be faced since we were going to machine most of it away anyway. This end will remain on the end of the threaded portion, so we do want a nice clean end on it. Now this lathe takes longer to spin down than I'd like. I really need to get a braking resistor, but the VFD that I chose to put on here didn't support it, so it is what it is. Mark off the length I want for the threads, and again, this is not critical in any way. I just want to uh, have, a, have them be pretty much consistent and just make sure there is enough thread. So I will touch off here first and take about five thousandths off of each side just to reduce it slightly so that it's just a little bit under 5 8 So when I put a 5 8 11 thread on this, I'll have the outside diameter just under 5 8 and it'll be a nice free-fitting thread. Now this is a CCMT insert, which means that the edge is as molded. So it's not ground and it's not sharp. And it really likes to take about an 8 thou cut. Since I'm taking less than that, the surface finish is dubious. But Ultimately, that doesn't matter because, you know, it's just going to be the crest of the thread. You're never going to see it. So the next thing we need to do here is put a gutter in the back for the thread run out. And all I'm doing is using a threading tool. I'm pushing in with the compound at about a 30 degree angle, then pushing across to clear that. Go back to the start, take a little bit deeper bite, take this across again and I'm just going to push this down so that it is just below the minor diameter of the thread that I'm going to cut and this will give me a place to stop the thread. I don't really like or feel confident in my ability to quick draw the tool at the end so I always thread with a gutter. The next order of business is to get the cross slide and the compound zeroed to prepare for threading. So the way I usually do that is just by putting some Sharpie on the part and touching it. Now I have it all set up. I'm going to go ahead and run a scratch pass just to make things sure things look okay. And you know, I always do this and then realize, oh, I don't really need to do that because I have an electronic lead screw here. So I just dial in 11 threads per inch and just close the half nut and go for it. So there's really no need to measure. I will just go ahead and start making passes. Now with this machine, since I fixed the cross slide now, so it's more rigid, see my previous video if you haven't seen that, uh, I can take 10 thou depth of cut feeding down the flank for everything but the last pass. And uh, so that's generally what I do. I'll just take 10 thou per pass until I get to the last pass and take whatever's left. That's, you know, five thou or less, that's pretty good, but I don't generally, on 11 threads per inch in mild steel, have to back off very much. So let's just plow through this and make the thread. That should be to depth according to the charts. Let's see how it fits. I've just got a 5 8 nut, and this is what I'm actually going to use when I mount these. You see, this is a used nut. It's got a big piece of metal hanging off the back where a lock washer cut it. So I think we're good there. We just need to clean it up. I usually try to hit the crest with a file and just kind of drag it through try to clean up the edges of this. And again, the goal here is just to deburr it. The fit's already fine. I'm just trying to clean it up so that it's nice and smooth and doesn't have anything that's gonna snag on my fleshy fingers.
Now for the end, I usually come back after the fact to chamfer and I'm just using the same 60 degree threading tool and we'll just push it in here until we clean up the end of the thread down to the root and then hit it with a file. Just smooth that over a little bit more and that should leave a nice smooth end that's not gonna injure anybody and it's gonna start a nut easily. This is what's called a Kratex stick. It's like a rubber eraser with embedded abrasive and it's just a great way to clean up threads because it conforms to the shape of the thread. This is sort of the finishing trick of master machinists everywhere and also YouTube hacks who have $10 to buy a Kratex stick. It does a great job of cleaning it up, but it does leave behind some little rubber particles. So we'll blow out the threads here and check it one more time with a nut just to make sure everything is nice and smooth. And everything is nice and smooth. The fit feels pretty good. I would like to play around with maybe electroplating these parts at some point in the future. So I would like this to be a little bit loose of a fit, but to be honest, I don't know how much allowance I need to leave for that. So we will call this good for now. Now in the camera, you can see some little ridges around those threads. Those were not visible in person. I know I'm not the first YouTube machinist to fall victim to the camera picking up stuff like that, but this part is done and we'll move on and do nine more. The next thing we need to make here are some rings to go around the storage pins so that they will shoulder out and will not fall through the holes in the rack. And to make those, I'm just gonna start with a one inch round piece of the same 1018 mild steel. And of course, the first step is to face the end. Get that cleaned up. You can see there's some remnants from something I made out of this piece of steel before, along with some paint from the hacksaw I used to cut it off. And in addition, I'd like to just take a skim off the outside to clean this up. Again, it doesn't really matter, but it is gonna be visible and I'd like it to be clean. Unfortunately, I really need the full one inch diameter, so I'm just barely shaving it. And once again, you can see the surface finish artifacts from using the wrong insert for a fine cut. I'm taking two or three thou off of this and the molded radius on the edge of the cutting tool here is larger than that. So I'm not getting completely under the skin and you're seeing those little shiny spots. Not to worry, however, Scotch-Brite covers a multitude of sins. In the end, this isn't going to matter because these parts are going to be welded and I'm sure this is going to, this surface is going to have to be touched again anyway. So we've got a solid to make rings. We need to put some holes in it and I'm going to start with a center drill. I actually prefer using a spotting drill for this, but center drill is what was handy. So we'll just go ahead and get this started. And of course I'm running that way too slow. So let's speed it up and just push the center drill in. really doesn't matter how deep we go we just need a spot to start a quarter inch drill and we're going to be drilling this in steps because this is a small lathe and it kind of sings a little bit until it finally gets bottomed in the center hole and then it cuts pretty well I'm just using a screw machine length or a stubby drill here and don't worry the whole lathe isn't moving that's the camera moving because somebody hit it with an elbow or something I have to keep backing this short drill out to clear the flute so it doesn't get packed up. And now we're gonna come back with a 3 8 drill and enlarge the hole. And of course, that makes a ton of noise until it gets fully seated. And now a half inch drill. If you thought the 3 8 was loud, Once it gets cutting, it's fine. That's just the nature of starting a two flute drill in an existing hole. Half inch is the largest drill that will fit in the chuck on this lathe. So I'll come back with a boring bar here and we will bore out two size. Now this is not a critical dimension at all because this just needs to slip over the 5 8 pin and be welded on. So, uh, you know, five, 10 thou oversize is just fine. So we'll just sort of push this out until we get close and then stop and take some measurements. And the best tool I have for measuring inside bores like this accurately is a telescoping bore gauge. So we'll just use this along with a micrometer and see where we ended up. Looks like just over 633. I can live with that. 
that'll work great. Now we just need to part these off and again, dimensions are not critical, so I will just use a scale on the edge of the parting tool. This is just a high speed steel parting tool that I honed to a nice edge on a ruby stone. And we'll just go ahead and push this through with plenty of lubrication. Now, just like when cutting chamfers on a small lathe, parting is the same thing. You've got to get into the cut and stay into the cut and keep making it chip. You've got to have the tool under the edge. If you rub at all, it will immediately chatter. So you can see I'm turning the hand wheel with one hand and I'm pushing it into the work, keeping it in the work, and then backing out to pause and reposition my hand. So this way I don't rub, it doesn't shatter, and even though this is sticking out a ways with the collet chuck and the stick out and no tail support, it still cuts just fine. This operation can go terribly, terribly wrong if your setup isn't nice and rigid. I have had parting tools grab and explode. I've even stopped the lathe cold once, just stop the spindle cold. I don't recommend it. I'm going to use the Millermatic 211 to do the welding here to attach these rings. And I just have this set to solid steel wire, 030 diameter, and I have the thickness set to one quarter inch. And this welder manages everything else. It automatically detects the arc conditions and it controls the wire speed. And all you have to do is just point and squeeze. And it just squirts out metal and you'll hear when it's running. It does a pretty good job of getting the settings right. Now, I don't care exactly where these are. These just need to clamp onto a three inch tube. So I'll put a nut on it and make a little mark here. And then we'll stand this thing up in the vise and drop the ring over it. You know, I could be real precise here, but it just doesn't matter. I will throw a one, two, three block against this and get it as square as I can. Get that snug down. You can see I've got the ground clamp on the copper jaw. We'll just drop the ring on there, grab some gloves, grab the gun and a helmet, of course, and tack this thing on. And we'll use our welder's hammer here to make sure it's sitting down flat. That tack didn't pull it up. Do a tack on the other side and then just weld it out. Love the sound of that welder. It does a great job with the settings. I have not had it miss yet. Now I've screwed up welds because I have no skills, but the welder's been great. Oh, and for those of you who are horrified to see me welding on this beautiful Wilton vise, don't worry, I'll just wipe it down with a rag and it'll be fine. I brushed the welds off, but eh, I'm still not happy with it. I'd like to put these back in the lathe and clean them up a little bit. So we'll just slide it back into the collet, which is still set up here, tighten it down. You can see I've got a little kind of a dingleberry on there. I don't want to run my carbide tool into that. So let me hit that with a file first and oh, just popped off. Yeah, I guess it wasn't really stuck. That welder is pretty clean. You can see the shaft is bent ever so slightly. There's just a little bit of distortion from welding. That's to be expected. I'll just touch this inside surface, take a few thou, push it in. And this again is just, there's nothing critical on this project. So I'll push it in until I can just see it touch the 5 8 shaft. And there it is. And then I'll feed a thou or two in and wind it back out and clean up that shoulder. And while I'm here, I might as well clean up the outside here. I'll just find the weld. Again, I don't want to ram this carbide tool into something that might be hard. So I'll just work it in here ever so gently. And then once I get down to the point where I'm touching, I'll take a couple thou and I'll just feed across. 
shoulders perpendicular and the outside is concentric and we'll just polish this up a little bit with the Kratex stick. Uh, by the way, these are also sold under the name Bright Boy. They're actually sold for model railroading for cleaning the tops of brass rails so that you get good electrical contact. But they are just magic for machine work. So we'll come back with the Scotch Bright and polish it up and remove the last of the discoloration from the welding. And that's pretty enough for me. I can totally live with that. Well, let's install some of these and see how they work. Well, I think those are going to work great. They're nice and solid. They're easy to get stuff on and off of. They don't fall out. They don't rattle around and uh, everything is accessible and they're not right in my face trying to poke me in the eye when I'm trying to squat. So I think this is a win. Now, the one thing that's not great about these is that these are currently bare steel and it's 1018 low carbon mild steel. So they will eventually rust in theory. Where I live, almost nothing rusts. These will probably be fine for years, but I would like to do something about it. I think I would like to try nickel electroplating. I've got the stuff for it. I don't have time to get into that today, so that will be a future video. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.